And right now, to tell you more about the types, I'd like to welcome back Sarah Gonzalez. Basically, every slam that happens in every championship, I just cry through the whole thing because, I don't know, their, their words just touch me, and I know how much they, they work hard at it, and I know how much you all love them. So I want to tell you a little bit more about the types and Spoken Futures, the organization that runs it. And so if I sound weird up here, it's pers- I'm crying on the inside because I love it so much. Um, all right, so... We, uh, the championships also kind of serve as the last event for our season. So we kind of want to go over the things and reflect back on all the achievements that the young people have done within our organization. Uh, can you turn it down just a little bit? I have a problem with background noise. All right. So I made this re- super cool. <laughs> Uh, so this is from last year we're over at the poetry center so we cannot believe it's already been a year since that picture was taken and that we're here today and there's so many things that we've done over the past year first of all we are now official this is co-director logan phillips and myself signing the paperwork for spoken futures incorporated give it up for starting a brand new organization We really wanted to create uh, an organization that could house all the different components that we were working on, that we have been working on, so we wanted to make it official. And basically, Spoken Futures is really about giving access to the literary arts and to more community engagement for young people all across Southern Arizona. And we do that with programs like Liberation Lyrics, which is our after-school social justice-focused program. We've been in Pueblo High School and Sunnyside High School when we have the funding. And that's one of my favorite programs because all of our staff that you'll see in this next photo, 99% of them came from that program. So we know it's really important for young people to be engaged. We need to go to where they are. We need to talk about these issues, and we use spoken word poetry to do it. But that's where we need uh, funding for. We haven't had it for about a year and a half now, so it shows. We see that um, in our numbers. So the, the slam is really important, but really Liberation Lyrics is creating a foundation for the work that we're doing. So you all are really familiar with the Tucson Youth Poetry Slam, one of our other signature programs. And this is part of our mission statement. Through dedication, irreverence, and love, we use poetry as a tool to dream tomorrow, honor yesterday, and live today. And give it up for our youth poets who helped write that, of course. And we could not do it. This is our amazing staff. This is our first ever staff retreat that we held at Sally Russ Ethnic Studies Teacher's House, who is here today. Thank you so much. We cleaned it up. Don't worry. So with all of their help, Um, They have made a force for, we are on social media, we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, and we have a thousand videos of young people spitting on the mic and over 40,000 plays. So this is really critical in getting the word out about what our young people here in Southern Arizona have to say. We run into teachers locally who are like, we use your videos to teach our students. We run into our homies across the country who do slam. We have homies out in Philly who are like, hey, we uh, watch your videos all the way in Philly so our young people can analyze slam poetry. They can analyze what it is that's going on in southern, southern Arizona. So it's been really amazing that we have people who film it every month and who put it up there and the youth who are willing to let their words be heard even outside of Tucson. So to explain what do we do, we do a lot of, mil- a lot of different things uh, in the community. This is too small for you to read. I just wanted you to see, like, how much that we do. (laughs) It's everything from our young people are trained to go and do writing workshops to their peers, to other young people across Arizona to talk about uh, social justice and art, um, to performing for benefits, to uh, bringing about awareness to the greater community of what's going on. So we're super lucky. This is a photograph from the Women's Foundation where they performed in front of 800 people and Alexia there got a standing ovation for her poem and talking about what it means to her to be undocumented and living here in Southern Arizona. So that's another way that we get to really learn because we get to go to the events and learn about those organizations and all the things that they do and how we can partner with them which brings me to my next point which is we have so many amazing community leaders within our poets Uh, so from way back in the day a few years ago where all three of our poets um, found out that their buses were being taken away from them so they organize they come with us and we help them learn and they help us learn 
the best tools of organizing. So when something came up in their community, they did it themselves. They organized and they had a school board meeting on the south side for their families. I went, it was a packed house. They did it bilingually and they kicked it off with the slam poem and they got their buses back. All the way to this year where Alexia, who was our reading our scores, uh, performed a um, slam poem at the start of the Board of Governors meeting for Pima Community College to ask for in-state tuition for deferred action students. And of course, we can't do that alone, so we're working with Scholarships AZ, that amazing organization in Tucson. So together, we're able to work together and bring change like this. So for folks that come up and say, oh, your kids are cute, they do poetry, I'm like, don't say that too close, don't say that too loud. <laughs> because we actually do make a lot of change in the community with your help. Um, also, a big shout out to the Crossroads Collaborative. I see Adela over there. Hi. Uh, this is a group um, at the university that we've been working with for three years. And a uh, large part to their help, our young poets have been published in academic journals that are nationwide. So these are just a few of them. And so again, their words are being validated, their words are being legitimized, and their words are being studied so folks can understand young people do have a voice and it does matter. Uh, again, with the publications Liberation Lyrics, we were able to publish a chapbook of poems from Pueblo and Sunnyside high school students who studied the school to prison pipeline and then wrote poetry about it and then it was put into a chapbook that sold out so we could educate the greater community about what those struggles look like. And then uh, Spoken Futures Press, as you saw Enrique earlier spit a poem. This is our first ever um, from the press. He's over there. <laughs> hey, you should buy one. Um, Tortoise Voice says, we are super excited. Um, the money uh, from selling the books goes to support the poet and also supports the money that we put into it. We have a donation station back there on the right, uh, so you'll be able to buy it there if you like. And then lastly, we are going to conferences. So our young people are getting a lot of experience in public speaking and talking about the ways in which they engage the world. This is a photograph from a local uh, conference where they talked about emoji art, emoji art and poetry. They made emoji poetry. I can't even say it. So um, it's really fun, it's really great, and it, it does a lot for them as leaders to learn how to do that. And then I threw a slam. They also still compete in slams. So um, this past year at the Arizona Statewide Slam, somehow we had two teams from, from Types and Spoken Futures, and they took first and second place. <laughs> So while well, we get very excited about all the things we're accomplishing and all the ways we're running around all over the place, we have to take a moment. Just like you all have heard all their poems earlier, there are real struggles, right? There are real issues that we all have to deal with. There are real issues that our young people have to deal with, whether it's family members or themselves being afraid of being detained or being detained and deported, people who are harassed, um, racial profiling, all these things happen on the daily and we're trying to find a way to put it in their poetry so we can bring awareness about it so we can stop it. Um, so our next slide, we do, like because we are a family, we always come back to that. For all the things that we do, we always come back to we are a family and in our family sometimes we lose people. So we wanted to take a moment to say how much we love the folks that we have lost recently and to hear um, some of their words. But in the end, it won't matter. I love you with all my soul, but because of my tremendous love, I have to let you go. My heart will ache and my lungs will quake for you always, but in the end, it won't matter. You must sign up for tights uh, because because it is the kind of organization that gives you the ability and the wisdom and the uh, safety to be who you are. If you are hearing this poem, you are fine. Nothing is wrong with you. You are perfect. If a tree falls in the forest, if no one else, a poet will be there to catch it. Gathering the gift of its leaves to write these words again. Sharpen its branches to make spears, to make arrows, to make war again. To lift up another martyr, to crash it down again. Poets, move another. No longer should we be allowed to speak to another poet unless we have answered the questions, what, where, who have you helped today? No longer should we be allowed to use the metaphor of our blood and ink unless we bleed for another. No longer should we be allowed to use paper for our words unless it is recycled. The reason is in my son's name. His name is Achan. It's Hebrew. Look it up. <laughs> When my son falls 
souls in this forest, and he will. A poet will be there to catch him. Thank you. So their words are always with us, and that's why I am super emotional all the time because I just feel their energy every time they get up there on the mic. So we encourage them because I feel like it's life and death. They have to be on the mic. They're amazing. They're beautiful. They're sharing our stories with us. I am learning so much from them, and I love that they say that they're learning from me too. So I just want to give it up one more time to all of our amazing poets and the year that we've had that's been so successful with your help. Give it up for the Tucson Youth Poetry Slam! That's what's up. So ladies and gentlemen, all of the amazingness you, that you just saw happens on a completely grassroots level, right? To put on this, all of the events we put on are completely free always. Even the championship, completely free. Why? Because we want to be an open door. But to be able to have our events be free, we write a lot of grants, we um, work with foundations to uh, levy support, but also just as in our uh, monthly poetry slams, we ask for donations.